Hi guys and welcome to Visual C++ Math App Tutorial. Now let me show you guys how this works. Here we have 19 plus 1. Let's check out the results. There we go. And this will be incremented. 22 multiplied by 8. What is the answer? 22 multiplied by 8. The right answer is 176. But I'm going to deliberately get that wrong and just see what's going to happen. The right answer is 176. Thank you. 13 multiplied by 6, what is the answer? And let's get this right. Just enter the right answer. There we go. And there we go. You are a winner. So I'm going to reset start a new game 14 plus 2 what is the answer there. 20 divided by 5 what is the answer there we go 17 divided by 7 what is the answer get that wrong the right answer is 2.428571428571143. So what? 22 I'm, minus 11. What is the answer? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you guys straight into C++ development environment. I will put one of these together. Let's do that now, guys. Okay, we're starting a new project. I'm going to click on new project. All right there, I'm going to select my templates, and that's going to be C++. So if you notice, I'm select, I've am select i selected CLR empty projects. That is what you guys need. Okay, if you don't have that in there, just come right here. Select C++, and in here, make sure you select Windows, and scroll right down, look for your CLR empty project. But what you need is going to be CLR empty project dot net and that is it right there there's different between dot net framework and just dot net so the one i'm using is dot net framework this very one make sure you select that and then click on next now I'll give you a project a name i'm going to call it cpp math app Let's enter something as this. So I'm just going to say two. Must up two. That's good. Click on create. And now that your development environment is ready, but the problem is you don't have a form. So to take care of that, you see this property in here. You see that very icon. Click on that very icon, and that will open up this dialog. Inside this dialog depends on your platform. I'm using 64 bit. If you're using 32, make sure you change that to 32 bit. Since my 64 bit, I'll keep it at 64 bit. And come right here. You see where we have configuration properties. You see underneath there's a linker. Drop the linker down and select system. Inside the system to your right, you now want to select sub system. Drop this drop down arrow down and select Windows sub system. There. Now the next thing is come right down here inside the linker again, select advanced. In the advanced, you see where we have entry point. The entry point is going to be the main. Just type in main in there. Okay. Now click on apply and then click on OK. There we go. Now the next thing you want to do is come back right here, you see your project name, right click on the name of your project and select add, inside the add select add new item and inside the new item you now want to select CLR, inside the CLR there is a form in the window form, you can also select UI, the UI does have a window form as well. I might as well stick to my UCLR, I mean, select the form and that's the form there. You can change the name of your form, but I prefer to leave it as myform.h. 
click on add there we go now we have an arrow there we go we end up with an arrow so what we need to do is to go to the solution explorer inside the solution explorer you see where we have myform.cpp double click on myform.cpp and right here you are meant to enter some lines of code but not to worry there's an easy way out there's a forum right inside our forum the lines of code are there for you to use you can always follow the instruction on here but the instruction is an old instruction however the code that you need is right here that is the lines of code this link will actually be added to the description area so copy that copy the lines of code come right down here paste it right underneath there you see your my form dot h now you have an error the error here is telling you the name is wrong so i'm going to now enter the right name the right name of my project is called cpp mass app 2 so i'm going to change that to cpp math app 2 no that should be cpp yeah and if it's right the error will disappear that is it done now if you want you can always run your program save it i'm going to click on run and the form should appear but that is not the end unfortunately you won't be able to see the form on the solution explorer that is the form but you do need to be able to see that form on the solution explorer but unfortunately we cannot see that for now so the only thing we can do is to close the program so that we refresh it and reopen it again okay let's close the program there and we're going to have to reopen it again I'm going to right click and let's select my CPP up to get it opened it's now coming up and there we go so if I click on the solution explorer now I should be able to see my form that is my form right there if you like double click on it that is it right there okay now make sure the form is selected come straight to the properties right here and I want to define the size of the form I'm going to make that 1386 by 800 and where we have start position I'm going to get that centered there window state I'm going to, instead of normal I'm going to make that maximize and that's it so the form is taken care of if you like you can change the data the details in here you can just call that mass app there and that will be displayed right here okay that's fine so the next thing I want to do now is I'm going to minimize that and come right here to my toolbar we'll come right here let's go into panel let's drag it that much there we go and I'm going to copy that same first of all let's change the back color of that panel to get it blue there we go I will now copy that same panel make sure it's right inside the other one and let's change this to control control is a default color there that is that taken care of I'm going to now change the appearance of this form so let's copy this panel hold on to the control click and drag and I'm going to reduce the size of this panel let's bring this here something like that now drag boots just take it down there that's fine I'm going to copy it as well hold on to the control click and drag copy it and paste it on the other side there we go okay let's go to the 
toolbox again and add the following. Let's come right here and we need a label. Grab a label here. Let's change the size of that very label first. I'm going to make that about 30. make that bold and I'm going to change the details here to let's say first number copy that hold on to the control click and drag right and I am now going to also copy it across let's dump it in here on the label here and another one here and one here and here I'm going to need label but this label I will change that to let's change the properties let's come right get rid of the text content go right up here you see where we have auto size make that false and the border uh, sorry the color you can change that to white with border style if you want you can change that to fix 3d or fix single i've just changed mine to fix single that is fine now this very label you can give it a name if you want so i'm going to call that lbl number one hold on to the control click and drag that's number two this is num no this is number two and this will be for my operation operator and up here we put a label in there as well that's for the title and in here the, this one let's change this one first this is going to be known as operator there there we go and this is going to be known as number one number two second number that's good and here I'm going to copy this let's just copy it and I'll reduce everything bring it down here so we can see it Also need to copy that again hold on to the control click and drag and put it right in here there now this is number two or second number this is first number operator and so on if you notice every single component in here they are all labels Okay, because the system will be generating the data that you want okay now right underneath here we need one that will say answer something like that we only need one we don't need to copy Copy that, paste that in there. That would be for the answer. Enter answer. And in here, we would then add a text box. Text box. That would be the only text box that we need. And change the size of that text box to 30 as well. There we go. up this will be for the buttons right so here we call this point awarded or point out yeah point awarded and in here that is going to be 
right and here I'm going to delete that as well because the system will generate that for me yeah that's fine and here change this to correct answer is now let's come right down here and I'm going to now get the center there we go right all that is left for us now is just to add the buttons grab a button we need three of those one two and three and I'm going to enhance this button that shouldn't be a problem for you guys to take care of so let's speed that up okay all taken care of so this button is called reset no that's result and this will be this is reset as exit now before I go any further let's go straight into the project here click on the project we need a reference no we don't have it in here you can always use a manage nuget but instead of that let's come straight into the solution explorer here right click on your project name and let's select add then select reference inside the reference all I need is speech because I want it to speak to the end user that is it the system dot speech so make sure it's checked and click on OK there we go so that is taken care of now let's double click on the form and let's scroll right up there we now want to import the following library so I'm gonna grab hold of all of this just copy that paste that in here then enter another semicolon another column I mean and in there I'm gonna enter speech there we go because I've already attached it from the reference and that is going to be synthesizer the next thing I'm going to need is going to be for media so let's say media there we go now you need those two library now that those two libraries are in place let's go right underneath the pragma here right there should be here somewhere there we go right underneath the pragma I'm going to declare okay first of all let's create an object for this speech so let's say speech synthesizer let it reference my variable is going to be known as sapi and that sapi is going to be equals garbage new garbage collector or garbage collector new that is going to be speech synthesizer there we go and done enter semicolon so I've declared the variable that I intend the, the object that I'm going to be using so the next thing I'm going to say is I'm going to add random and let it reference as follows and that is going to be garbage new and that is random there we go now the next one I'm going to now call declare a variable and this one is going to be string variable this string variable I'm going to call it arithmetic operator there we go one more thing let's add another variable and that's going to be add value and add value and we'll get it initialized with zero or by zero that is it done so those are the data I intend to use and right underneath here you can start work start work with our function so I'm gonna grab hold of this let's copy that paste it here and that is going let's call our function math app function 
mass f function there we go that's my function in there so inside this very function i'm going to declare as follows let's say double and that is going to be first number that will be the random whatever random number that is generated next to let's give it from 13 to about 24 there that's my first number now I'll repeat the same thing for the second number All right and one more so change this to second number and this one is going to be integer and the value in here is going to be 1 to 5 why this one will be 1 to 12 there then one more that will be int number and the value of number will be 1 initialize with 1 okay so for now those are all the those are the variables and the object that I'm going to be using and in here that is the function that I intend to use okay so underneath here I'm going to start by entering answer I would like the cursor to set focus to the answer focus now the next thing is I'm going to use a for loop for i I don't have i in there so I'm going to say int i that will be equals zero comma i less than and equals to number i plus plus open up curly braces this very one that should be known as operation Let, let's change that to operation or operator whatever uh, let's see operations and I'm going to make this lowercase so the operation that's going to be my I'm going to be using that for the switch statement so right in here I'm going to ask it to switch operations come right down open up curly braces and the first case is going to be one enter column so for your information that is my function that I'm creating that will generate the random numbers and the random operator as well okay if the case is one then our operator will become the plus sign copy that and paste that right underneath here that will be equals the plus sign there if that is equals plus sign then lbl1 dot text and that will be equals let's say convert whatever we have in there dot to string whatever we have inside num1 convert that to string so we repeat the same thing for label number two paste changes to two okay now that that is taken care of I want sappy to read out what we've just done remember sappy the speech application interface that I declared up there so I'm going to say sappy dot speak as same and what I, what you're saying is going to be whatever we have inside the text box one no label one lbl one plus enter the plus sign and add another plus in there and whatever we have inside lbl2 paste that in here 
clause we can just say what is the answer so let's say 2 plus 1 what is the answer there we go the SAP will read that out for us and one more thing break you must enter break for each case statement that you have so copy that I'm going to use that for the second one now paste paste and paste so this is number two in the case of number two this will become maybe subtract this is number three and number four here so let's say four is the division and this is multiplication and this is subtract so this one is going to be number one minus and the next one here that will be multiplication so let's say multiply by change this to multiply by okay multiply by and the last one is going to be divided by all right so that is taken care of now one more thing right underneath here we must have a default function for this default then application arithmetic operator will become automatically will just become either divide or plus whatever you want to put in there that's fine I'm putting plus in mind okay then we get it breaked see break there and right underneath here I'm now going to say LDL operator dot text that will be equals whatever type of operator selected there and we end it with a semicolon there that is my function created and for us to find out if this function works we need to be able to call it somewhere so I'm going to use the form load let's click on the form double click on the form and that is the form load right in there I'm going to paste my function that's the function that I created and this is it up here okay math app function and those are the lines of code that I used to make that up so I've just call it in here now so let's see if it's going to work click on run 17 minus 17 what is the answer there we go even if we enter the answer in there we can't do nothing yet I'm going to click on exit but unfortunately there's no lines of code in there so that's not gonna work so let's click on this exit out there and let's go straight into the form and double click on the exit button then we we'll take care of that get it out of the way double click on that and in there first of all I'm going to use try cache inside track try cache enter that in there and I'm going to enter the cache statement underneath here and that is going to be exception so the whole idea of a try cache statement is to handle whatever error that you might run into the system will just automatically take care of that for you instead of the program crashing so in there my error message you can enter whatever you want to enter so let's say the error message this is how we put that together message box dot show so that should actually be column column this is C++ column column show as follows so that is going to be dash message there and enter that is it but now to take care of the exit statement itself I'm going to use the following let's say system yep column column windows column column 
column forms and column column the dialog results and the dialog results I'm going to name it as I exit so that is my variable it's called I exit and I will use happy to do something for me so I'm going to ask happy I'm talking about the speech application interface here I'm going to grab that asking how to say something confirm if you want to exit something like that so just paste that right underneath here so once you click on the button sapi will speak up asking you to confirm if you want to exit so you just add that in here there that's what the system will ask you confirm if you want to exit now the variable we use the following method so let's say I exit equals message box and the message box we want it to show as follows show the following and what are you showing confirm if you want to exit that's what that we show okay that will be our first argument comma the second argument that would be the title you can call it whatever you like that's up and the next argument because this takes in for argument that is going to be message message box button there we go message box button takes in yes no or whatever so I'm going to select yes no comma and finally the next argument is going to be for the icon message box icon and the icon can be question information or whatever there they are asterisk error exclamation hand information question whatever I'm, going, I'm just going to use exclamation close that and end it with semicolon let's press enter so that we have it on two lines there you can choose question question seems to be the appropriate one for that so one you can enter question there or exclamation or error or whatever so now use if statement if I exit equals equals all of the information that we have in here system dot window dot form the dialog result and if that happens to be yes enter curly braces in that case application dot exit application column column exit there we go yes you can always enter just ordinary application dot exit but that is not being professional you see this way is like you prompting the user to confirm are you sure you want to exit something like that so that's more professional and that's the one that will officially generate the error from within the system and if you like you can add exclamation mark and so on any of those the choice is yours let's assume I copy all of this now I can just paste that here I still leave this this is the error message from the system so I'm gonna paste that right here okay and this one I'll just change it to okay that's it okay now we can change this to maybe error handler there we go all right it's all the same but make sure you don't get it wrong you must leave this there this is the error generated by the system itself all other ones are just information all right that is our exit taken care of if i run it now let's check out how that's going to work click and run 21 multiply by 21 what is okay. the answer so let's check out the exit confirm if you want to exit you see that confirm if you want to exit yeah so that takes care of the exit okay let's take care of the reset so scroll right down double click on the reset button um right 
underneath here I'm going to use as follows let's first of all let's use try cash again I'm going to copy everything in there and paste that in here since that is for exit I'm going to get rid of all of that there just leave this like that and in here the reset we have as follows oh I should leave sappy let's grab hold of sappy paste sappy in there and in here we can say start a new game and we also want LBL display we say let it point to text dot text that will be equals play there and who else do we want to play so copy that um also going to have to change the background color though so let's say lbl lbl display dot back color that will be equals the default color default back color right txt answer clear and we also want to get it enabled txt answer dash enable that will becomes true because we're going to have to disable it at the end of the whole process now we want txt answer to get focus as well it's cleared it's enabled is let's say txt answer dot focus then lbl store points clear and a column here that should be focused right then we also need to call our mass operator function I mean the app I've just called the app in there mass app function that is my reset okay now one more double click on the result okay right inside the result first of all I'm going to have to declare the following let's say double and that is going to be num1 and let's say num1 equals let it convert whatever we have in there inside the label to double so that will be lbl number one dot text there we go that's for the very first one I'm gonna copy this a second one and another double is going to be there so this is going to be text lbl num2 so this one will be number variable number two and this is going to be as follows let's change this to answer and result answer comma we have result okay all my variables are in place now i'm going to make use of the value that was declared up right up this i call that add value that is a right there add value in this case is going to be equals add value plus one remember it was initialized with zero so it's now going to add one right in here now let's use an if statement if lbl operator dot text if that is equals that will be double equals because it's comparing the value that we have in there if that is equals the plus sign in that case answer is going to be equals number one plus number two
there. So that's the first part taken care of. The next one is going to be else if. Else if, if you subtract, then this becomes subtract. Copy that. And I've pasted it twice. If it's multiplication, this becomes multiplication. If it's division, this becomes division. If it's division, this becomes division. There. Else, we can just say answer will become zero. There we go. All right, the first lot is taken care of. In that case, let's say result. That will be equals. We need to convert everything in here to double. So I'm going to grab a hold of this conversion. Convert that to double. And that is the answer. So whatever we have in here is going to be TST answer. Whatever we have in here is converted to double. And it's stored inside answer inside result. So we're now going to compare whatever we have inside result and answer. Okay, so let's use an if statement for that if result. is not not equals answer and do that that should be answer if it's not equals answer then we want sappy to say something so let's say sappy dot speak Speak the following, let's say, incorrect incorrect answer, comma, the right answer is as follows, let's suppose, I'm going to have to convert that and the right answer is going to be answer. So let's convert. Now there should be a quote here. Quotes, get rid of this. And get this converted. Convert to string. And that is going to be answer. There. So Sapi will say the following and read out the correct answer. And LDL display the text text and that will be equals convert to string. And what we convert in will be the answer. There we go. We have the answer in place. In that case, value is going to be less minus value. Value equals, or we can say subtract there. Then the mass up function we call that to start all over. Once that start all over, we want the text to focus on the answer dots focused. The focus. Okay, focus on the answer. And the answer itself, get rid of whatever we have in there before. Dot text that will be there. Now, 
the next one is we now want the system to tell us if we win or lose in that case we need make sure you enter semicolon in there we need some sound I'm going to copy some sound in here that is the sound and that's it right there so I'm going to right click on it make sure it is selected first hold on to the shift key right click so that I can copy the part that's the copy part there right I will now come down here so let's create the following for sound sound play get that object in I'm just gonna call it SP to be equals garbage new sound play sound player that will be equals the copied parts just paste that in there that's the copy the part that I copied right and enter semicolon in there so this alarm will say you lose okay now we need to run that up sp dot load load the sound and you also need to play it now sp dot play synthesize the sound there we go that is it done but if the answer is right I'm gonna copy all of this copy paste it right underneath here change this to equals equals if the answer is right all I just want is for the sound play this one to say something for me so I'm gonna grab all of hold of all of this cut it off I'm gonna paste it right here I don't need this to say it's wrong because it's right there now the sound that I need is now the winning sound which is right here that's it okay I'm going to change alarm to win there that is taken care of once that is done get rid of this let it call the function once the function is called I want the following I want it to say focus I'm gonna get rid of first of all let's say LDL store point I need that as well the text that to be equals I want it now to convert whatever we have grab all of that copy and just paste that in here to add a value so in there we're gonna call that uh, we're gonna call in the add a value there we go that is taken care of once add the value is called set focus set focus in there as well uh, we don't need this if you set focus yeah get rid of this so that takes care of that okay supposing we end up with the following let's say we have three points and so on okay we can take care of that right now as well I'm only gonna use an if statement the if this equals three the value in there if it's equals three or four or five depending on you how long you want to go for I'm just gonna make my maybe about three so, so I can end the program there if that is equals three if that is equals three I want it to this should be inside here so just move it back in here all right and this will be equals equals so if store point equals three I want the following to happen 
I want Sapi to say something, maybe well done, you won or something. So we can just grab hold of Sapi. Paste that in there. Now let's just say well done. Let's say you are a winner. There, that's what Sapi would say. Then we we can ask the display to display something. LBL display. That's text. We want you to display the following. You are a winner or something like that. You are a winner. Okay, grab all of this. There we go. Down. We can change the back color. LBL display dot back color. Dot back color. That will be color equals. You know, back color equals yellow or something. Dot maybe yellow. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. Then TXT answer. Let's disable all of that. Dash enable that will be equals false except if you click on the game again then LBL no L B L num one dot text that is equals clear and LBL num two LBL num2 the text cleared out as well and that is it and we also need to clear the operator though lbl operator clear and that's all there is to it i believe so have a good look at the lines of code for the Result. Take it from there. Bring it down and down. There. As for the sound, you can add whatever kind of sound you want, and you don't even have to add the sound. If you don't want the sound, just get rid of this. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to save and run. There we go. 15 multiplied by 15, what is the answer? So that's easy. So you can just enter 225 in there. That is good. 18 minus 18, what is the answer? We know the answer is 0. 18 minus 18, I'm going to get that wrong. The right answer is 0. 15 multiplied by 15, what is the answer? Thirteen divided by thirteen, what is the answer? The right answer is one. Seventeen plus seventeen, what is the answer? And you should have three here. Well done. You're a winner. Okay. And that is how you create your own math app in C++. So with that, guys, I'm going to call it the end of this beautiful tutorial. I suppose you guys enjoy it. And you all have a nice day now. And please do subscribe to this, my second channel. There will be more interesting video on this very channel. Have a nice one. And bye for now.